Hi guys, and welcome to paper two for um, June 2018. So just a quick word of warning, guys. If you found paper one difficult, this one is actually more difficult. It's more challenging. Um, so try and follow what you can, but just, just be aware that some of the questions towards the end are really, really, really challenging. Um, and don't be too disheartened if you can't do everything. Remember, you need to decide what grade you're aiming for. If you're aiming for a nine, if you want to get a nine, then yes, you need to be able to understand how to do all the questions. If you're aiming for less than that, however, um, it's more important you understand um, the basics of everything um, than you understand how to do some really extraordinarily difficult questions, which um, some of these are. Anyway, here is the, the front page. It's always the same. Here's the formula sheet, also always the same. And here we go to question one. It says answer all 23 questions. So there's 23 questions in this paper. Um, and you have to show all your work and you know that. So question 1A, make A the subject of the formula. So this is the formula and we need to get A on its own. So the first thing I'd like to do guys is just swap. We just swap um, them around. So instead of saying M equals this, this equals M. Now I have A on the left. Then I'm going to subtract, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to add BD to both sides. So I'm going to add it. When I add it here, it disappears. And I'm going to add it to this side. And then finally, I need to get rid of this C. How do I get rid of it? I divide because it's multiplied on this side. I'm going to divide over here. So it's M plus BD all over C. And I'll write that here. A equals M plus BD all over C. Great. Part B. Um, solve the inequality. Now this inequalities guys behave quite similar to to equations. Just be careful um, about divide, multiplying or di dividing by a negative number but you don't have to do that here so it's just like an equation. I just add the 4. 39 plus 4 is 43 and then I divide by 5. 43 over 5 and I can literally just leave it like that x equals 43 over 5 if you want to put 8.6 that is also correct part C then says factorize fully this so we need to take out the highest common factor so the the highest common factor for 18 and 12 is 6 highest common factor from the E's is E squared sorry not the bracket guys E squared because I have an e squared here and I have an e squared here. I have, an, I have another e, but I, there's an e squared within there. And then f, I have an f cubed here and an f on its own here, so I can only take out an f. They are what's common. Then what do I multiply by to get the 18? 3. What do I multiply to get e squared? Nothing, so I just leave it. And what do I multiply f by to get f cubed? Well, I have to multiply by f squared is f times f squared will give me f cubed. Then I need to put the minus. 6 times 2 gives me 12. e squared times e, I have to put this e here to give me that e cubed. And the f is there on its own, and it's there on its own, so I don't put anything. And that's it. So it's 6 e squared f brackets 3 f squared minus 2 e. Okay, that's question 1 supposed to be one of the easier questions and straight away that wasn't that easy okay question two work out the difference between the largest share and the smallest share when this many yen 3450 yen is divided in the ratio two to six to seven okay so firstly guys we're going to divide it in this ratio so what we do is we do two plus six plus seven add these first we get 13 plus two is 15 then I divide this by 15 because I want to get, I want to break it into 15 parts. So I can give him two, him six, and him seven. So three, four, five, zero oh, divided by 15 equals. I'm going to need a calculator for this, guys. Three, four, five, zero oh, divided by 15, 230. And then I'm going to just share it in this ratio. So I'm going to do 230 
times 2, 230 times 3, I'm uh, oh, sorry, 6, and 230 times 7. This I can do in my head, 460. This I can do in my head, 690. And this one, can I do it in my head? I think I can. It'll be 1,400, 1,610. Um, obviously, guys, you can use your calculator if you want. Um, so it's 1,610. And the question, though, be careful, it says the difference between the largest and the smallest chair. What's the largest chair? This one. What's the smallest chair? This one. So I need to do 1610 minus 460. 1640 minus 460. That gives me, guys, 1150. Zero. Yes, that is correct. Okay, that's question two. Question three. Um, Gopal, hope I pronounced that correctly, is paid twenty thousand rupees each month. Juma, um, Jamuna is paid nineteen thousand two hundred rupees per month. Gopal and, and Jamuna are both given increases in their monthly salary. After the increase, they are both paid the same amount. Gopal was given an increase of eight percent. Right. So let's do that first. We're going to do Gopal's money. Let's actually write her name here. Gopal. We're going to do 20,000 rupees. And I'm going to multiply by 1.08. That will increase by 8%. That's how we increase. We multiply by, we find the multiplier. And well, just by doing this, we will get the increase. So it's 20,000 times 1.08. Eight, because it's eight percent. This is twenty-one thousand six hundred. Twenty-one thousand six hundred. Now this is a tricky question, guys, because it's kind of like a reverse percentage question. We need to find out the percentage increase that Jamuna was given. So let's actually write Jamuna here. Jamuna. Now, I don't know what percentage, what 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 increase she was given, but. I know that, and I can form an equation here, I know that 19,200 times something, so times something equals um, 21,600 because they were paid the same. It says, look, after the increase, they are both paid the same. So I know whatever this increase is, she's gonna get 21,600. So I just need to find out what this is. Now guys, I'm gonna be very fancy. Instead of putting a bracket, I'll put an X. So 19,200X equals 21,600. And then I'm gonna divide the two. So it's 21,600 divided by 19,200. Let's do this. 21,600 divided by 19,200. Zero, zero, and I get nine over eight. Now I'll just convert this to um, a decimal, and I get 1.125. So x equals 1.125. Now be very careful. The question is, what's the percentage increase? So she got an 8% increase, so we multiply by 1.08. What's this increase? Well, the increase is, if this is 8%, this is 12.5%. 12.5%, because what's important is, it's like the, act, the increase, the one just adds it on to her initial value, but the increase is 0 0.125. And what's 0 0.125 as a percentage? Well, it's 12.5%. Okay, question four. Show that this equals this. So guys, look, you have a calculator, you can do that on your calculator, but you're not allowed to use your calculator because they give you the answer. So he wants you to show this. So we need to go through the long process of actually um, showing it. So how am I gonna do that? Well, what I normally do is change it to um, 
change it to improper fractions. So I do 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. This times this plus this. So it's 25 over 7. Minus 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13. So it's 25 over 7 plus 13 over 8. And what does this equal? Now we're just subtracting fractions, and I need a common denominator. Now, guys, you've, there's a little hint here. Look, this has to be the common denominator because it's it's in the answer. Um, but I also know 7 and 8. 7 times 8 is 56, so it's definitely going to be a, a common denominator. Um, so I'm going to do this in 56ths and this in 56ths. So how do I figure it out? Well, 7 times 8 is 56. 25 times 8 is, because I have to multiply the top by the same, so 25 times 8, I actually know that, guys, it is 200. And then similarly here, you don't have to put in these arrows, guys, but I'm going to do it just to help you. So 8 times 7 gives me 56. 13 times 7, that I think I will use my calculator for. 13 times 7 is 91. So this is 91. So it's just a 200 minus 91 is 1. 109, so that's 109 over 56, which is, you guessed it, 1 and the 53 over 56, because it goes in once uh, with a remainder 53. How did I know that? Well, 56 times 2 is 112, so I can just subtract it. 112 minus 109 um, is the 3. Anyway, you could you can actually do that bit. You can do this bit on your calculator at the end. So let me just show you. I can press this button here. 109 over 56 gives me this, and I can convert it. If you press Shift and this button here, it actually converts it into a mixed number. But you're given it anyway. So assuming you've done the right the right thing, uh, you will get that right answer. And I know I'm right because I got the right answer. Okay, question five, circle theorems. This is actually not a bad circle theorems question, guys. It says this is a tangent. So the first thing I think of is, if this is a tangent, this is a 90 degree angle from here to here. Let me draw that again. This, that's even worse. This is a 90 degree angle. Okay. Now, the hard bit of this question is recognizing that this, these often come up, guys, and it's not even one of the circle theorems, that that and this are the same. They're the same because this is an isosceles triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because these are both um, radius. This is a radius and this is a radius. Hence, they're the same length, hence isosceles. So that angle there is... Um, 18 degrees. Now it says give a reason for each stage of your working. So you have to say um, O, so angle, angle, O, OQP, OQP equals 18 degrees. And the reason is you can just write I, I, sauce. I hope I can spell that correctly. Isosceles triangle. And then the remainder, the remaining bit, let's say is, um, let me choose a different color, this guy here. Well, what's left to give you 90? Well, it has to be um, 72. So angle, um, PQT, which is what I'm trying to find, PQT, equals 72 degrees. Um, and you can say because um, T, angle T, Q, O, which is this big pink one, equals 90 degrees as QT is a tangent. 
is a tangent. So that's a circle theorem, guys, that the tangent meets the radius at a right angle. So the answer is 72. Question six, part A. Work out the curved surface area of cylinder A. Give your answer in meters squared, it's all in meters, to three significant figures. Now guys, in the formula booklet, it gives you the curved surface area of a cylinder. It's two pi or h, two pi or h. I'm gonna call this um, CSA for curved surface area. It's 2 pi or h. So it's 2 pi or is 0 0.56 and h is 1.6. Now all I have to do is put this into my calculator 2 times. Use the pi button guys. Don't, don't use 3.14. Use the pi button because we'll round at the end times 0 0.56 times 1.6 gives me 5.5 5 5 5.62973 that's enough for now and then to th to three significant figures because you, you need that for the final mark it's 5.63 first significant figure second significant figure third significant figure Look to the right, it's nine, round up to three. Okay, that's fine. Now it starts to get a little bit more difficult, guys. It's a cylinder B. Cylinder B is mathematically similar to cylinder A. The height is 0 0.6. Work out the radius of cylinder B. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'm just gonna do it here, guys, because I, I want to show you the, the image, obviously. So I'll just do B, part B, here. Um, so when you see mathematically similar, we want to get the scale factor. The scale factor is equal to, and it depends, uh, do we want to get bigger or do we want to get smaller? Well, we're, gonna f we're looking for the radius of B, so we're gonna be getting smaller. So I want the smaller, the scale factor, when I'm going from big to small, which means I need to find the equivalent side. So this is the height, and this is the height. So the scale factor will be this height, small height, over the big height. If you want to do the big height over the small height, that would work too, so long as you divide, but just be, just be careful. So the scale factor is, um, 0 0.6 divided by 1.6, which is 3 over 8. And I can just leave it like that, 3 over 8. And then I have to multiply, because I'm trying to find the radius, so I need to multiply this radius, 0 0.56, by the scale factor. Because by multiplying by the scale factor, it will give me that length. So 0 0.56 times 3 eighths times 0 0.56 gives me 21 over 100 or 0 0.21. So that's just 0 0.21. And I'll write that answer here, 0 0.21. Okay, done. Question seven. This is a combined mean question, guys. This is a little bit tricky. So students in the class, sorry, in class A and class B take the same exam. 28 students in class A, 32 in class B. Let's write that down. Class A, 28, and B, 32. The mean for all the students is 72.6. That's the total mean. The mean for students in class A is 75, so the mean equals 75. Work out the mean, that's just for A. Work out the mean for the students in class B. So this guy's mean, I don't know, I'll call it X, because it's the unknown. Okay, now, what we do is, we assume all these students got 
75 marks because their mean is 75 so I can basically assume they all got 75 so I'll just do 28 times 75 that will give me the total marks scored in class A because imagine they all got 75 that's how much the total marks would be we'll do the same for B but we don't have the mean we have X so I'll just say 32 X so that's the total marks scored by everyone if you added up everyone's marks now to get the average mark we add up everyone's mark like this and divide by the total number of students which is 60 because it's 28 plus 32 there's 60 in total maybe I should put here total is 60 and mean 72.6 so this is equal to 72.6 because the, this will give me the total mean and we know the total mean is this what I don't know is this X but now it's just become a solving an equation question not a not an easy one but um, a manageable one I think so let's first do 28 times 75 is 2100 so this is 2100 plus 32x equals if you'll allow me guys I'm going to do this in one step I, I'm going to multiply by this denominator so if I multiply this by this um, it will remove the denominator so I multiply by that 60 it gives me 4356 4356 six and now this is just a, a two-step equation with big numbers so I just do this minus 2100 minus 2100 is 2256 2256 and then X will be this divided by 32 divided by 32 which is 70.5 70.5 that is their mean okay yeah not not easy guys part B this question actually is easy if you see that it's tr it's a little tricky there's a trick but once you see it it's actually is an easy question the lowest score of class A is 39 well okay sorry it's not easy actually now that I look at it it's uh, but it's manageable. The lowest score in class A is 39. So class A, class A, lowest is um, 39. And the highest, the highest is going to be, because this is the range of scores for class A is 57. So remember the range is the biggest minus the smallest. So if I know the range, if I know the range is 57, then the highest has to be 39 plus 57. 39 plus 57 is 96. So the highest they got is 96. For class B, so let's call this A, and I'll just do B here, guys, and I'll remove this if I can. Okay. Um, the lowest for B gives us is 33, and he says the range is 60, so the highest must be 93. So let me just explain that again. Look. If the range is 60, the range is the highest minus the lowest, 93 minus 30, 33. If for class A, if the range is 57, 96 minus 57 gives me 39. Then he says find the range of scores for all the students in both classes. So the range is the biggest minus the smallest. What's the biggest score in, in the whole thing out of both classes? The highest score is 96. What's the lowest score? the lowest score is 33 so the to the range of all the scores it has to be the biggest 96 minus the smallest 33 which gives me 63 done okay question 8 
Um, okay, a trigonometry question, guys. You should all be happy to see a question like this because it's there's nothing tricky to it. Once you've learned Sokotoa, this is fine. Speaking of Sokotoa, let's write it down. So -ka Toa. Now, which is this? Here's the angle. I have the adjacent. I tick adjacent. And I want the hypotenuse. I tick hypotenuse. Which has the two ticks? Ka. So I'm going to use cos. So it's cos 52 degrees equals adjacent, which is 12.6, over hypotenuse, which is x. And then we cross multiply. I'm going to do it in one step. If you are okay with this, guys, I'm going to say x is equal to 12.6 over cos 52 degrees. And on my calculator, I will do 12.6 divided by cos 52, close the bracket, press enter. And I get 20.4657 equals 20.4657. Note three significant figures. So I change this to 20.5. This is the third significant figure. Round up to 20.5. Okay, question nine. Another one, guys, that I would say you should be happy to see a question like this because there's nothing. Um, there's nothing confusing about it. It's just a case of have you practiced simultaneous equations enough, and you should have. So it's simultaneous equations, I need to get either the x's or the y's the same. I'm going to get the y's the same because it's a smaller number. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 5, giving me 5x plus 5y equals 75. Then I'm going to leave the bottom equation as 7x minus 5y equals 3. Put a line underneath. Now I need to decide, am I going to add or subtract? Well, I'm going to add because that will remove the y's or eliminate the y's. Uh, 5x plus 7x is 12x. 5y plus minus 5y, so I'm adding this, is 0, so it's eliminated. And 75 plus 3 is 78. And now I can just do 78 divided by 12, which I believe, guys, you can do it on your calculator. I'll do it on my calculator. 78 divided by 12 is 6.5. Okay. Now I have x, 6.5, write it down. To find y, I can sub this into any of the any of the four equations that I have, or sorry, three equations. But definitely I want to choose that first one because that's the easiest one. x plus y equals 15. Um, 6.5 plus y equals um, 15. This minus this is 8.5. So y equals 8.5. 8.5, there we go, that's question nine. Question 10, guys, not an easy question, but if you understand indices and the rules of, rules of indices, it's not too bad. So find the value of n. The first thing I'll say, guys, is look, let's, let me show you a little trick. Say I do this, I can do eight over two to the power of seven, and I press enter. And it's it's one over sixteen, so that's that's given me the answer one over sixteen. Now maybe you can figure out two to the power of what gives me sixteen. Or sorry, gives me one over sixteen. Well, two to the power of four gives me sixteen. So two to the power of negative four will give me one over sixteen. So the answer is negative four. But let me let me show you um, the kind of more correct way of doing this in the way they want to see. So 8 over 2 to the power of 7. 8, guys, is 2 cubed. That you should know. Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So when you see 8 mixed with 2s, or even a 16, or whatever, 
it's usually the base is two, it's two to the power of something. So two cubed over two to the power of seven is equal to two to the power of n. So now he's saying just combine these and you'll get n. So how do I divide, um, or what's the rules, the rule for indices when I'm dividing? Well, if the base is the same, and it is, you subtract the powers. So three minus seven, what's three minus seven? It's minus four. Three minus seven is minus four, equals two to the power of n. So now look, two to the power of negative four equals two to the power of n. These two have to be the same. So n is equal to negative four, and that's it. Okay, next question. Um, I have, again, rules of indices. I'm going to do 13 to the power of negative 6 all to the power of 4. A power raised to a power, what's the rule? I multiply the power. So this is going to be 13 to the power of negative 24 times 13 to the power of 5. Now when I multiply power or multiply together with the same base, what do I do to the powers? I add them. So it's minus 24 plus 5 is minus 19. So the answer is uh, k equals minus 19 because he only wants the value of k. He's saying this is 13 to the power of what? That's what the question is. All of this stuff here equals 13 to the power of what? The answer, the what, is minus 19. Okay, question 11. A solid metal sphere has a radius 1.5 centimeters. The mass of the sphere is 109.6 grams. Work out the density of the sphere, giving your answer correct to the three centimeter figures. All right, so firstly, guys, density is mass over volume. That is not in the formula sheet, and you need to know it. So I need the mass, which I have. The mass is 109.6 grams. I need the volume. I don't have the volume. How do I get the volume? The volume equals, well, let's have a look in my formula sheet. Is there a formula for the volume of a sphere? Yes, there is. It's 4 over 3 pi r cubed. 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So I write down 4 over 3 pi r cubed, which is 4 over 3 pi times r cubed, or is 1.5. It gives us that 1.5 cubed. It gives us the radius. And this I am just going to do with my calculator. So it's um, let me write it like this. It's 4 over 3 times pi, again, use the pi button, times 1.5, 4 over 3 pi r cubed to the power of 3. Press enter, and I get 9 over 2 pi, or 14.137. 14.137. Um, 14.137. Now I put this volume in here, 14.137, and I just do 109.6, 109.6 divided by 14.137 gives me 7.7527, 7 7.7527, three significant figures again. So it's 7.75. Now look guys, if you do forget the mass, density is mass over volume formula, if you look down here, the units are in grams per centimeter cubed. Grams is mass, centimeters cubed is volume. So it kind of gives you a hint of what the formula is from that. Okay, question 12. The diagram shows a hexagon a, B, C, D, E, F. B, C is parallel to E, D. Um, like this. Okay, nice. Um, work out the size of the obtuse angle D, E, F. Right, how many marks, guys? This is five marks. This looks like quite a challenging question. 
So the parallel bit, that's obviously going to be important. And it is important because I can find this angle here using that information. If this is 42, this has to be 138 because these are co-interior angles. This angle plus this angle have to equal um, 180. They have to add up to 180. What am I trying to find, by the way? I'm trying to find D, E, F. I'm trying to find this angle here, the obtuse angle. Um, okay, so now this is, guys, uh, it's a hexagon. This is a hexagon. The angles inside a hexagon, angles inside hexagon, add up to, add to, um, the formula, if you remember guys, is 180 times 4, which is um, 720. So the angles in a hexagon add up to 720. This formula you need to know guys, it's 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. So if it's a six-sided shape, I subtract 2 and I get 4. Um, okay, so these angles all have to add up to 720. So I'm going to actually call this angle here, the pink one, x, because I can now say 50 plus 96 plus 144 plus 42 plus 138 plus x equals 720. And 20. All the angles, this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this, the interior angles add up to 720. And now I can find x by just subtracting these. So let's do that. I'll do 720 minus 50 minus 96 minus 144 minus 42 minus 138 and I get 250. So x is equal to 250. But wait, that's not what I'm after. I'm after the green angle, DEF. So angle DEF has to equal, or I should say, let's do that, plus 250. That angle plus 250 has to equal 360 because the this is a full circle. These is these are angles around a point. So these two angles here have to add up to 360 because that's a circle. So what's left? Angle DEF and it's the obtuse DEF guys. Um because remember the pink one is also called DEF. This is equal to this minus this which is 110. I'll write it here, 110 degrees. Okay, question 13. Felix has 10 cards. There are five red cards, four blue cards, and one green card. He takes at random one of the cards. He does not replace the card. He then takes a second card, complete the tree diagram. This, to me, guys, is very familiar. I've seen this type of question many, many times. So there's 10 cards. If he takes a red one, what's the probability he gets another red one? Well, he's taken out a red one, so now there's only four red in the in the pack. Or whatever, he has the ten cards. But he's taken out a red, so here's a red card, taken it out. Now there's only four cards left, or four red cards left, because one is here. And there's actually only nine cards left in total, because the, he's taken out one of the reds, so there's only nine cards left. This is This is called... Um, probability without replacement. Look, he does not replace the card. If you put the card back in, again, the next card would be out of 10, but it isn't. How many blue cards are there? Well, there's still four because he's taken out a red, but it's out of nine. How many green cards? Still one out of nine. If he takes a blue card, so now imagine he takes a blue card, there's still five red cards because this is when he takes a blue card, but it's out of nine. How many blue cards are there if he takes a blue card? Well, three, because he's taken one, so it's three out of nine. 
and then you get the point guys he takes a blue there's still one green out of nine and if he takes a green card if he takes a green card now there's going to be actually zero green cards there's no green cards or zero out of nine if you want to write that red there's still five and blue there's four note guys that these three add up to one these three add up to one these three add up to one and these three add up to one that is two marks then it says work out the probability that felix takes at least one blue card and no green card okay so how many different things can happen guys there is there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine different outcomes. He could get a red, red, a red, blue, a red, green, or a blue, red, a blue, blue, a blue, green, or a green, red, a green, blue, a green, green. What I actually like to do is write out over here the probabilities for all the options, especially if they're nice, easy fractions. So the way a tree diagram works is you multiply along the branches. So I'm going to do to get a red and another red. We do 5 tenths times 4 ninths, which is 5 times 4 is 20. 9 times 10 is 90. To get a red and a blue, I do this times this, which is actually the same probability. A red and a green, this times this, 5 over 90. And I'm going to continue. 4 tenths times this is 20 ninetieths. 4 tenths times this is 12 ninetieths, 4 ninetieths, um, 5 ninetieths, 1 tenth times this is 4 ninetieths, and this is actually, sorry, ninetieths, and this is actually 0 ninetieths. You can't get a green and a green. These, all these red probabilities, these are the probabilities of the nine different outcomes, and they should all add up to one. 20 plus 20 is 40, 45, 65, um, 75, 77, 81, 86, 90 plus zero is 90. 90 out of 90, that is correct. The question is a bit tricky. It says the probab probability that he takes at least one blue card and no green card. Now you just got to go through them and say, which is it? Uh, it, is this at least a blue card um, at least one blue card and no green card no because this doesn't have a blue so that one no this one has a blue and no green yes this one no this one has a blue and no green this one has a blue and no green this one has a blue and a green so that's no good this guy has no blue no good this guy has a green and a blue, no good, because it has a green. And this guy has greens, so that's no good. So these are the only three outcomes that are possible. So what do we do? We just add them up. So it's 20 over 90 plus 20 over 90 plus 12 over 90 gives me 52 over 90. Right, not an easy question, guys. Part A, I would say, yes, I expect everyone to be able to do that. Part B is tricky. I think the way I did it is probably the way that uh, you're most likely to, to not make a mistake. Okay, question 14. Luckily, guys, for these questions, we have a calculator. So I can go to this, and I can go to the um I can go to where do I want to go again? I can go to the table. Okay, in the table I can type in the function. So I'm literally gonna type in x here's x cubed x cubed minus two x squared minus 3x plus 4. Press enter. g of x, he wants to give me another function. I actually don't want another function. I only wanted the one function. 
so it's fine. I'm going to press enter. The start value is negative 2 because my table starts at negative 2. And the end value is 3. These questions, guys, are nice. They're nice for everyone. Now, just be careful. The step, I'm going to have to put 0 0.5 because look, this isn't going up, this isn't going in a, this is just minus two, minus one, zero. There's a, there's a minus 0 0.5. So just be careful with the step there. Press enter. Now he gives me the values, but uh, again, be very careful. Minus two has to be minus six. Um, minus one is four there. Minus 0 0.5 is given. 0 is 4, that's given. 1 is 0. 1 1.5 is given. I could have actually done a step 1, guys, because because those two were given, but whatever. Um, 2 is minus 2, and 3 is 4. So minus 2. Um, 2 is minus 2, and 3 is 4. Minus 2, 4. He then says, on the grid, um, on the grid, draw the graph of this from minus two to three. So I just need to put in these these uh, points. Minus two minus six is here. Uh, minus one four is here. Minus zero point five, four point eight seven five. So just somewhere this is four point eight, and um, somewhere there. 0 is 4, 1 is 0, 1 1.5 is minus 1.625, and minus 1.625, so somewhere there. You now guys, you got to be, like, you, you got to be quite accurate here. So how do I know minus 1.625 is here? Well, that's minus 1. That's minus 1.2, minus 1.4, minus 1.6. So it should be just a bit after it. Um, 2 is minus 2. And 3 is 4. Okay, so that looks weird, guys. But if you know what a cubic function looks like, it, it looks like this. It goes up, then down, then up, a positive cubic. So mine is going to go up, and then down, and then up. Now guys, the one, this is the one part of my videos that I really struggle with. It's very hard to to uh, draw with this pen, but so you're going to have to do better than me. Goes up through this, down through this, down through this, down like this. This isn't too bad, guys, but Okay, like that is definitely not okay. That should be like a nice straight curve there. And this bit is also not okay. So you get my point, guys. You can do better than me. It should be a nice curve. It shouldn't be going backwards like that. Okay, I'll accept that for now. Or I'll accept losing a few marks. Okay, part C, right. This, guys, I'm not going to lie. This is really challenging students always find this difficult so this this cubic is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 so x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 that is the graph x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 that's the graph the equation is Let's write this here. The equation is x cubed. Change the color. x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. So we're going to use the graph, and it says by drawing a suitable straight line on the grid. So this is the first question, guys, where at the start I said this, this exam is really challenging. This is a challenging question. Yes, I'd like you to be able to follow what I'm doing, but don't panic if you can't follow it just yet. So this is the equation that I'm trying to solve, and this is the graph. 
I can't use the graph to solve this equation because this equation is different. The fun this is not this. So I can't I can't solve it using the graph. But what I can do is I can make this, the left side of this equation, look like this. How can I make it look like this? Well, if I subtract 2x and add 3, what's going to happen is this is going to become minus 3x, which looks like this, and this is going to become plus 4. So now my left-hand side of the equation looks exactly x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. It looks the same as this x cubed minus 2x squared minus x minus 2x is this, 1 plus 3 is this. But you can't just add and subtract stuff from one side of the equation. You have to do it. You have to do the same to the other side of the equation. So I have to subtract 2x minus 2x and I have to add 3 to this side of the equation. So now when he says draw a suitable straight line, the suitable straight line is this, draw y equals minus 2x plus 3. We're going to draw this line, this line, and where this line meets the curve, that is the answer to the question. Okay, now it's minus 2x plus 3. Let's draw that using this y equals minus 2x plus 3. Maybe you know how to do this, guys. The y-intercept is 3. The gradient is minus 2, so it's going to be going going like this. I'll, sh I'll, I'll draw it without, yeah, without the calculator, just to show you that it's possible. y-intercept is 3. Gradient is, um, gradient is minus 2. So that means for every 1 along, like here, every one along, I go down two. So I go down one, two. Now just be careful because the um, the scales are different. So I've gone one along and I've gone down two. So this is the line. And obviously guys, I'm gonna continue it all the way to here. And I'm gonna continue this all the way to there. If you don't like what I just did there without a calculator, remember you can always go back to this, the table, and write it in yourself, minus 2x plus 3. Press enter, press enter again. You can start, um, well, you can actually start wherever you want, but let's go minus 1 and end at 5. And I get these points. Remember, you, we only need 2 to draw a line, but there's minus 1, 5. Minus 1, 5 is here. That's on my line. Um, 0, 3, that's on my line, 1, 1, that's on my line, I've got the line, that's the straight line. Then I go, right, what is the solution to the graph equals, because look, my guys, I know this is hard, the graph equals the straight line, graph equals straight line. Where does graph equal straight line? Well, here, there there and there where they meet where they intersect is where they're equal so what's the answer here well I need to go straight down there like this I need to go straight down here like this and I need to go straight up here like this so the answer is this would be minus five, six, seven. This would be minus, let's go zero point. This one is minus zero point, well, I don't know, I'll go seven, five. This is five, six, seven. This is also zero point seven, five. Um, and this one is two point, um, two point three. So my three solutions 
are minus 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 2.3. Now, guys, I'll just put a disclaimer, minus 0. And so x equals minus 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 2.3. So a little disclaimer, the mark scheme, you can look at the mark scheme yourself, they're, they're close, close to these answers, but they actually accept a range of answers. So one, mine actually aren't great because my graph is drawn poorly. If you've drawn a better graph, you'd get more accurate answers. But I think the mark scheme says, accept anything from minus 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, or accept anything from um, 0. 5 to 0 0.8 or something like that. Um, so just be as accurate as possible. Um, but that's the method. That's how you do it. That is This question, guys, notoriously one of the more difficult topics in the whole IGCSE. And that one, yeah, that's not an easy question. Okay, next one, 15. E is rounded to two decimal places. F is rounded to two decimal places as well. Work out a lower bound for the value of E minus F. This after a horrible question 14 this isn't bad so I'm going to guys draw I like drawing these lines here's my 8.31 and it's been rounded to two decimal places so I need to go um, I need to go up to to 8.32 and I need to go down to 8.30. And then with this second line, or the second value, f, he's at 0 0.65. The next one is 0 0.66. And this one here is 0 0.64. A lower bound for e minus f. How can I make e minus f? as small as possible. Well, the trick is, if I'm subtracting f, firstly, I want, I'm subtracting f from e. I want to make e small. And I want to make, let's say make e small. And I want to make f big. The reason is, that will minimize this because I'll have a small number here and I subtract a big number. If you subtract a big number, the number gets smaller, hence a lower bound. So that's the key. We want to make E small, this is this is E, and we want to make F big. So how do I make E small? Well, once you've this thing set up, the lower bound is halfway between the two. So it's right here. What's halfway between the two? Well it's eight point three five just be careful halfway between uh, point three zero and point three one is point three oh five and then I want to make f big so I have to go the upper bound which is here what's halfway between these two um, it is if, if you want to figure it out like this guys halfway between halfway between 0 0.65 and 0 0.66, add them together and divide by two. 655. So this is 0 0.655. Now I'm just going to do this minus this. I'm going to do 8.305. Uh, minus 0 0.655 hopefully this is the right answer 8.305 minus 0 0.655 s to d 7.65 yes that is the correct answer 7.65 okay hopefully that makes sense guys next question 16 or is proportional to t squared. The graph shows the relationship. Find a formula for or in terms of t. Right, guys, proportional. If it's proportional, we say or is 
proportional, that's the proportional sign, to t squared. And then you can even skip that step. You can say r equals k times t squared, some constant times t squared. That's what proportional is by definition. Now, normally, guys, with these questions, they give you a value. They say when r is something, t is something. And you sub it in, and you find k, and you get your answer. In this question, they haven't given us that. They've just given us a graph. So we need to use the graph to, f to, um, to find a point, to find a value for t and r that matches. The obvious one to choose, and definitely the one they want you to choose, guys, is this. There's, see that point there? It's exactly t is 2 and r is 10. So I'm going to write that down here. I'm going to say when, when, um, when t equals 2, r equals um, 10. Now the question is kind of familiar. It's like one of the questions we've done before. So I sub in 10, 10 equals k t squared is 2 squared which is obviously 4 um, 10 equals 4k I'm just going to go over well, let me just go down a bit here k is equal to sorry k is equal to 10 divided by 4 which is 5 over 2 then it says, what's the formula for R in terms of T? You've done the hard bit, guys. All you have to write down is R equals KT squared. But instead of K, I put 5 over 2 because I have it. 5 over 2 T squared. OK, great. Next question. Well, it's part B. It says, given, that, given also that R equals 8, over 5x show that t is inversely proportional to the square root of x. Okay, so we know what r is. r is 5 over 2 t squared. We just found that out from the previous question. So it's 5 over 2 t squared, and it says this has to equal 8 over um, 5x because it says r equals this. So now we just need to show that t is inversely proportional to the square root of x. This guy's, we're almost, we're almost finished because look, you'll see if I square root both sides, it is inversely proportional to the square root of x, but let, let me show you. First, I'm gonna cross multiply. I'm gonna multiply by two, giving me 16, and I'm gonna divide by five, giving me 25. So just to be clear, I've done 2 times 8 and 5 times 5. And then the x is at the bottom here, like that. t squared is equal to this. I have to then get t. So t is the square root of 16 over 25x. I'd actually get, get the full marks for that, guys. But it would be nicer to put it like this. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. And then root x is just root x. Now, you can say hence inversely, inversely proportional. Because it equals something, some constant, times 1 over root x. Because it's at the bottom, that's what that shows that it's inversely. As x gets bigger, t gets smaller. Okay, uh, next question, 17. Okay, so the first part of this is relatively straightforward, because if you know how to differentiate, um, multiply by the power, 3x, and subtract 1 from the power, is 2. Multiply by the power, subtract 1 is 1, minus 15x becomes minus 15, 5 goes to 0, we're done. That's the derivative. 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. Now you'll note often with this differentiation question, you get one question that's fairly straightforward, and the second one is, well, it's more into testing that you understand what differentiation is and what does it mean. So the derivative gives you the gradient of the curve. 
the gradient of this function here. So we have the derivative, and we can use this to find the gradient at any point. If you subbed in 1, you'd find the gradient of the curve at 1. If you subbed in 10, you'd find the gradient of the curve at 10. But he wants a range of values for which c has a negative gradient. So what he wants you to do is he wants you to find where's the derivative where is the derivative 3x squared minus 4x minus 15 less than 0? Where is it negative? Less than 0 is negative. So now it's become a quadratic inequality, which, guys, is always um, tricky. So before I do it, let me show you a trick. You can find the answer, guys. You can go to this b is inequality the polynomial is degree 2 we want where is it less than 0 so that's the second one and then we write 3 we write negative 4 and we write negative 15 and we get the answer that's it it's bigger than negative 5 over 3 x is bigger than negative 5 over 3 and less than um, three. Now just be careful guys, you won't get full marks for that, in fact you won't get any marks for that. You'll get one mark for this because you've recognized that it's where the gradient, where the derivative is less than zero, but that's that's not enough, so you have to show you're working. You have to actually solve this um, this quadratic. So you need to factorize it. How do you factorize? Well, there's lots of different ways to factorize quadratics, guys. This is one of the more difficult ones. I'll um, do it my way, and obviously, if you've got your own way of doing it, that's absolutely fine. So I do factors of 3x squared is 3x and x. Factors of 15 are 3 and 5. So I just need to find out where I put the 5 and where I put the 3. I'm going to put the 5 there and the 3 there because I cross multiply. I do this times this and this times this because we're going to multiply out the brackets. And then I decide which is negative and which is positive because they have to be set different because that's a negative. This will be negative and this will be positive because when I multiply this by this, I get minus 9x. And when I multiply this by this, I get 5x. 5x minus 9x is minus 4x which is what I wanted there. Again, guys, I've seen at least seven different ways of solving these. Um, I'm still yet to make my mind up on which is the best, but this is the one I teach, so there you go. So this is actually um, 3x plus 5 times x minus 3. Where is that? Less than 0. Now, to solve quadratic inequalities, I always say, guys, draw a graph like this so it's a it's a quadratic it's a smiley face i need to find where the roots are so consider i'm just going to write consider 3x plus 5 equals 0 this is 3x equals negative 5 x equals negative 5 over 3 and this one or x minus 3 equals 0 x equals 3. So these are my two solutions and hence look guys here's my 3 and my negative 5 over 3. So I'm going to put um, 3 here and negative 5 over 3 there. And then I draw my quadratic. It's a smiley face, it's positive so it's going to go like this. Whether it's a smiley face or sad face is extremely important guys for the quadratic inequalities because it's because it's then less than it would be different if it was a smiley face obviously so where is this less than zero where is it below the x-axis well it's below the x-axis from here to here hence the solution is from minus 5 over 3 x has to be greater than minus 5 over 3 and less than 3 there you go so you don't even need the graph, guys. If you had, if you, if you got as far as here, in fact, if you got as far as here, and then just use your calculator to there, then you're um, you you would get all the marks. Okay, question eighteen. A triangle has 
sides of length 8, 10, and 14 centimeters. Work out the size of the largest angle of the triangle. Give your answer to one decimal place. All right, I like that question, guys. I'm going to draw a triangle. That's 14. That's 10. And that's 8. Now, this is obviously an approximation. 14, 10, and 8 centimeters. Which is the largest angle? Well, the largest one, just from looking at it, is this, this angle. But you could say to me, well, hang on, Mr. Flint, how do you know that that is the largest angle? And the answer is, I don't like that, guys. The answer is, that's better. It's the angle opposite the largest side. That's the one that gives you the largest angle. And if you don't believe me, try and draw a triangle where that isn't the case. It's just not possible. It always happens like that. Um, okay, so that's the angle I want. Let's call the angle um, theta. You could call it x, guys, call it whatever you want. But I have, um, I have three sides, and I don't know the angle. This is the cosine rule. Now, guys, let's have a look at my formula sheet. Do they give us the cosine rule? Yes, they do. Here it is. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now, they don't have it rearranged. So, uh, well, I'll show you what we can do with it. But um, it's there. There's, there's the cosine rule. So when we have three sides, when we know three sides, we're trying to find an angle, it's the cosine rule. So let's write that down. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now A is the angle opposite A. So just be clear on what's happening. B and C are the two B sides. So A squared in this example is 14. So it's 14 squared. B and C is 10 squared plus 8 squared, 10 times 8, and then cos of A, or I'm going to call it theta. So just to be very clear, A, when you're trying to find an angle, the, the little a is the side that is opposite the angle. Okay, then the rest of it is just working, working out. Uh, this squared is 196, use your calculator. This is 100, this is 64, this is 160, uh, this is cos theta. Then um, I am going to do, uh, I'm going to subtract this. So this is 106, 164. 196 minus 164 equals negative 160 cos theta. Uh, let me just make sure I'm right here, guys. One, 196 minus 164 is 32. I knew that. But I'm going to divide by negative 160. And this gives me um, cos theta. So I'm dividing by this. Um, so cos theta is equal to, oh sorry, cos theta is equal to this. Theta, once I have cos, theta is just the inverse cos. Inverse cos, and I can leave it like this. And it's minus 32 over 160. 30. 32 over minus 160 is obviously the same as minus 32 over 160, so they're the same. Um, and I just have to use my calculator now. I'm in degrees. I'm going to do inverse cos. This minus 32 over 160. Close the bracket. And I get 101.536. 101.536. He's asked to one decimal place, so it's 101.5. Okay, guys, certainly not an easy question because there's so much algebra and manipulation you have to do there. But again, I'd call that 
I'd like a question like that on the exam, especially as one of the harder questions, because it's familiar. It, I know if I have three sides, it's cosine rho. The only thing that isn't familiar, maybe, is to note that the angles that they're looking for is the one opposite the, the biggest side. Okay, question 19. Work out the size of the angle. So there's this. Work out the size of the angle between the line BE, this one, and the plane ABCD. So the plane is this thing at the, at the bottom. Give your answer to one decimal place. All right, the first kind of big thing you got to get straight is what angle are they actually talking about can you see it here is it this one or this one or what or this one well it's it's actually none of the above the angle they want is because if I'm starting if I'm starting at E when we go from E imagine drawing a or getting a string and just standing on the string and lifting it up with your hand at, at an angle when it comes down here that is the angle it wants. It's the angle from E to B to D, because D is directly underneath E. So that, before you do anything, guys, make sure you understand why it is that angle. It's hard for me to explain here um, without showing you something in, in 3D, but um, see if you can get your head around it. So it, he wants this angle. Now we have this length here. So this is actually this pink. This is a pink triangle here. Let me draw that pink triangle. All right, it's a right angled triangle. Again, we're in three dimensions. So try and visualize it. This is a right angle triangle. This is the angle that he wants. Let's call it X. This height, I know it's 10. So I can't find x because I don't know any other height. But I can figure out this length here, this one. How do I do it? Well, I'm going to use this triangle. Now again, guys, note that this here is a right angled triangle. It's a right angle triangle because look, imagine this is on the ground. This angle here on the ground is a right angle triangle. So this blue triangle, and this is why these are tricky questions, guys, because you actually have to draw them again in 2D. So this length here is 24 because it's this length, and this length is 8. Okay, so look, we've 24, we've 8 because of this, it's a rectangle, and this length, I don't know. I don't know this length. Let's call it y. How do I find y? I can use Pythagoras. y squared equals 8 squared plus 24 squared. y squared equals, let's do that, 8 8 squared plus 24 squared is 640. y squared is 640. Then y is the square root of 640. What's the square root of 640? The square root of answer is 8 root 10 or 25 point, let's just go 25.3 because it's so close. So this is 25.3. Now I have y. Where is y in relation to my pink triangle? Well, it's actually this one here. Let's put a y there. But it's also y for the pink triangle, which is this guy here. So now I have this y, and it equals 25.3. In fact, guys, I'm just going to put... 25.3 here. Okay, once I have this, it is now just um, Sokotoa. That's a right angle, and that's a right angle. So it's Sokotoa, opposite, adjacent, it's Toa, so it's tan. So I'm going to say tan x equals 10 over 25.3. x is equal to the inverse tan, 
of 10 over 25.3, which is inverse tan 10 over 25.3, close brackets, 21.5667, 21. Point five six six seven twenty one point five six six seven which is twenty one point six to one decimal place twenty one point six okay definitely guys not an easy question I find drawing the, these two triangles helps a lot um, and it was only three marks that is not nice okay question 20 histogram the histogram shows the information about the birth weights of some babies. The y-axis is frequency density. So it's the area that tells us the frequency, or in this case, the number of babies. So well, let, let me let's find out the air, what area uh, uh, corresponds to to these the number of babies so let's read the question six six of the babies had a birth weight less than 2.5 so that's here that's 2.5 2.5 and greater than four here so what area is less than 2.5 and greater than four so area um six babies let's hang on. six babies is represented by, I'm just going to draw an arrow, count the small squares or multiply them to find this area. One, two, three, four, five times four is 20 plus, because it's, it's this plus this. So it's 20 plus one, two, three, four, five, 10, which is 30. So six babies, six babies, is 30 boxes so the area this is what I mean by the area represents the number of babies so 30 boxes gives you six babies so I can nicely figure out one baby is represented by divide by six five boxes that I think is the hardest bit of the question done once you have like how much how many boxes is one baby we can figure out the rest. It says, work out the number of babies who had a birth weight between 2.5, that's here, and four. So essentially, all of this, this plus this plus this plus this. Okay, so I can count the boxes. Um, number, let's just do number of boxes. Let's do, I can write between between 2.5 and 4. The number of boxes between 2.5 and 4 is, firstly, here I have 20, plus here I have 4 times 5, 10, 15, 20, which is 80. I have 2 times 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, which is 50, and 4 times 15, which is 60. So guys, what have I done there? I've literally just added up all these small boxes. Do it however way you want, but obviously just this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. That's why I've got these numbers. That's 100, 110, 210. So, um, there's 210 boxes, and we know one baby is five boxes. So I just need to do 210 divided by five gives me, um, I can do that in my head, guys, it is 42. So the number of babies who had a birth weight between 2.5 and 4 is 42. Okay, nearly done. Question 21. Show that this plus this equals this show clearly you're working again guys um it limits it limits your ability to use the calculator but you can you can always try some things like if you put in square root 45 
it gives you that this is 3 root 5 so that's that's uh, something um, can I do this no so it, but it simplifies it so root 45 is 3 root 5 the reason it's 3 root 5 is because root 45 is root 9 times root 5 because 5 times 9 is 45 and root 20 is root 4 times root 5 because 4 times 5 is 20 root 9 is 3 so that's 3 root 5 root 4 is 2 so that's 2 root 5 and 3 root 5 plus 2 root 5 is 5 root 5 and that's it done two marks part B express this in the form of this right so this is what we call rationalizing the denominator we don't want a square root in the denominator so how do I get rid of it well I multiply above and below by the conjugate of the denominator the conjugate is just if this is a minus it's plus and if this is a plus it's minus so it's root 3 plus 1 over root 3 minus 1 now guys these questions are again notoriously difficult but that's the first step sorry not uh, both ha have to obviously be the same because you can't just multiply by a, a random fraction we're just multiplying by 1 which means we're not changing that but you'll see how this will rationalize the denominator so firstly I do 2 times this is 2 root 3 2 times 1 is plus 2 and then root 3 times root 3 is 3 so this is like first times first first times the second root 3 times 1 is plus root 3 minus 1 times root 3 is minus root 3 and minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 now nearly there I have 2 root 3 plus 2 on the top and then look this is the whole point of multiplying by this the root 3 minus root 3 cancels so we're just left with 2 finally I divide everything by 2 and I get uh, this divided by 2 is root 3 and this divided by 2 is 1 so it's just root 3 plus 1 okay part C express this in the form of this so this is a completing the square question but with roots involved as well as if it wasn't hard enough okay to complete the square first thing is we're gonna half this that's a nice little trick you half this to 3 root 2 the reason you half it is because when you expand it out you double it and, then, and you get the same thing again anyway so you half this and square it but you have to subtract um, you have to subtract this squared so I have to subtract 3 root 2 squared why do I have to subtract it well because when you square this you end up adding on this square term which doesn't exist here so you have to take it away anyway this is not a completing the square lesson guys if you if you haven't done this you need to go back and, and revise it um, and this minus 1 is still here so we're nearly finished this is fine it's x plus 3 root 2 squared so we actually have a we're done but we haven't got b because we need to simplify this 3 root 2 squared is actually well you can do it on your calculator guys let me show you 3 well let's do a bracket first 3 uh, root 2 squared is 18 the reason is because you do 3 squared is 9 root 2 squared is 2 and 3 times um, sorry 9 times 2 is 18 so it's minus 18 minus 1 which finally gives us I'll just write it here x plus 3 root 2 squared minus 19 okay question 22 so this is a tricky um, 
circle theorems question very difficult it's question 22 expected to be difficult so clearly there's some intersecting chords here and this looks like an intersecting second theorem needs to be used we're trying to find x the, my first thought is definitely intersect intersecting second theorem which i'll show you what that is in a second or you can look it up but the problem is i don't know i don't know this i need this whole length to use the intersecting second theorem so i can't actually use that yet but i can find this length by using the intersecting um chord theorem which is going to use these these values here so let me just call this y here because if i can find if i can find this value this um um y well hang on guys sorry before i do that i'm going to draw i'm going to continue a line on to here because if i can find this length here like the the whole diameter i'll be able to find this length here because it'll be the same thing it'll be a diameter so i'm actually going to call this whole length here from here to here y that's the big blue line is y now the intersecting chord theorem states that I can say 2 times y 2 times y equals um, 7 times 4 that's the intersecting chord theorem this times this equals this times this so 2y equals 28 y is equal to um, 14 which means the diameter diameter equals 16 because 14 plus 2 gives me 16 so now I have the diameter which means I also have this here this value is 16 the red value Okay, now, and guys, I did warn you, this is not an easy question. I can use the intersecting um, second theorem, which tells me that I can say five times the t this total length here. Let me choose a different color. Five times... this five times that length and that length is 7 plus 4 plus 5 which is 16 so 5 times the full length is equal to um, x times that full length so now actually let me let me draw well hang on the red is 16 the purple which would be the full length over hang on guys I just want to be clear here let's just draw it here the full length um, is going to be 16 plus X so this this uh, this purple line is 16 plus X because 16 is just the red line as far as here and I need to add another X so the second theorem, and guys, you might need to actually look up the second theorem again to make sure you follow what I'm doing. It states that five times, um, sorry, this five times the total length, which is 16, equals x times the total length, which is 16 plus x. There we go. So this was tricky to see hard to see this was very hard to formulate and even now I have a quadratic that I need to solve this is 80 equals 16x plus x squared subtract the 80 I'll just bring everything over here guys if you don't mind it's gonna be x squared plus 16x minus 80 equals 0 all I've done is subtracted 80 to this side and then just swap them around so it looks nicer then 
remember you can solve this with a calculator guys but in the IGCSE you have to for it with a quadratic you have to show you're working either the formula or factorizing it and I think this does factorize guys I'm going to do x and x this is 20 times 4 20 times 4 plus and minus that is going to give me 20x minus 4x which is 16x that is exactly what I want so I then say x plus 20 equals 0 x minus 4 equals 0 x equals negative 20 x equals 4 nearly done as if that wasn't hard enough I have to write down the value of x is x minus 20 or 4 well look at it it's a length it's the length of a line tell me what line has a length negative 20 that answer makes no sense so I what we say is I reject this answer x has to equal 4 reject it because you can't have a negative length okay final question this guys is possibly the hardest IGCC question I have ever seen so I definitely don't panic if you can't do it um, I would imagine most students even those that got a 9 did not get this right um, if you if you know of or have seen a harder question please let me know but um, I think this is very tricky so I'll do it you can watch it you can try to understand it but please note it's difficult so it says the sum of the first 48 terms is four times the sum of the first 36 terms the sum of an arithmetic series guys this is in the formula sheet it's n over 2 2 a plus m minus 1 um, plus m minus 1 d that's the formula I'm not going to scroll up but you can see it in the formula sheet so I'm going to use this formula to get the sum of the first 48 terms s 48 it equals sub in 48 that's 48 over 2 times 2a plus I'll do this a bit quickly guys it's 48 minus 1 is 47 n minus 1 48 minus 1 is 47 d close the bracket and over here I'll do s um, 36 same method 36 over 2 times 2a plus again 36 minus 1 is 35 D close bracket now I say this is like the hardest question I've ever seen or one of them but actually everyone is able to get I think how many marks is this in total five marks perhaps though what I've just written down there is worth two marks I'm not, I need to check the marks going to be certain but everyone is able to get those two marks I can simplify this 48 over 2 is 24 into 2a plus 47d and this is 18 into 2a plus 35d okay now next bit again for another mark it says um, the sum of the first 48 terms of so this thing here, this 24, uh, 2a plus 47d, is equal to is equal to four times this, four times the sum of the first 36 terms. So I'm going to do this times four, and guys, I'm just going to skip a step if you don't mind. I'm going to write that equals. Well, look, actually it's so hard let me write it down it's 4 times 18 2a plus 35d okay now the reason I say this question is so hard guys is the, the arithmetic sequence series questions you're familiar with often you do create two equations and then you solve the two equations simultaneously the problem with this one is you actually don't have two equations you've only got one equation You've got one equation with two unknowns, with an A and a D. So I can't solve it. I can't find A, and I can't find D. But you'll see at the end how it works out. Um, and it's, I think, a bit mean, to be honest, but you'll see. 
So this is equal to um, 24, 2a plus 47d equals, this is 72, 2a plus 35d. And now I'm just going to divide both sides by 24. This bit's OK. This divided by 24 is 3. So it's 3 into 2a plus 35d. And by the way, he's, he's asking me to find the sum of the first 30 terms of this series. So what am I going to do? Well, I am going to say, um, well, let's multiply out that bracket, 2a plus 47d equals 6a plus 35 times 3 is 105d. Then I am going to say um, 4a, I'm just going to subtract the 2a from here, is equal to 47 minus 105, which is minus 58d. This bit, guys, is just, I, this is OK. I'm just solving an equation here. But I'm, I, I can't solve it yet. I'm just finding a in terms of d. And I'm actually going to divide by 2, just to make it a little bit more simple. And this is equal to minus 29d. OK, now you'll see why I say, guys, this is ridiculously hard. I have this, and I'm like, what am I going to do? But it says find the sum of the first 30 terms of the series. So let's do that. He wants S. He wants S. 30. S. 30 is 30 over 2. Back to the formula. 30 over 2. 2A plus N minus 1. N minus 1 is, well, I'm going to write it this time. 30 minus 1. D. Which is equal to uh, 15. 30 over 2 is 15. 2a plus 29d. And I'm like, OK, what do I do? And then I saw it, because I've done this question already, guys, because I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do this question without trying it before, because it's just it just looked so horrible. Um, what do I do now? And then I see the connection. The 2a that I have here is minus 29d. So this, instead of 2a, I'm going to put minus 29d. And I'm going to add this 29d. And look what happens. Minus 29d plus 29d is equal to 0. And 15 times 0 is 0. So it w the only reason it works out, the only reason you can solve it, um, with the two unknowns is because they cancel and you end up with zero. So definitely a mean question and a pretty horrible way to end the exam. But as I say, I think everyone is actually capable of getting to here. You can get to here because this, you can get to this point here because you all have this formula. This is just subbing in the numbers. This is just subbing the numbers. And then this is creating the equation using the information he gave. The rest of it, fine. If you couldn't get it, not, not that bothered. All right, that's the paper done, guys. Um, I'll see you for the next one, which I'm guessing is November 2018. Bye-bye.